Welcome to part two of Aerospace uh, Propulsion Lecture 16. Um, we left off with this question of sort of why does the Smith chart have the efficiency trend that it does? It basically sees the trend of efficiency increasing as we move to lower work coefficients and lower flow coefficients. So if we have a high flow coefficient, that suggests that the Mach numbers are going to be fairly high and more likely to have supersonic flow in the turbine and thus shock losses which will decrease efficiency. And if we have a high work coefficient, that means we have very high flow turning, um, and that may lead to local boundary layer separation. So those are the two regions that, that both high flow coefficient and high work coefficient tend to lower efficiency. Before we get into other um, parts of our turbo machinery, I'm just gonna briefly talk about fans. We'll come back to fan characteristics a little later on, um, but fans are, are just compressors. Fans are highly specialized uh, compressors, um, and from the uh, commercial aircraft engine perspective, they're single stage compressors. The big thing that's different about them is that they have very high aspect ratio. Um, so the span to cord ratio of the blades is, is high. So you, you know, some of them are maybe around four um, compared to you know in the vicinity of one to one and a half for most compressor blades. Also, because of this, the radial velocities are often not negligible and can be significant parts of the overall velocities, which requires a more complex analysis approach. The axial velocities entering uh, a modern jet engine fan will normally be around 0.6, and that means that the mass flow per unit area is going to be up and around 80-85% of that required to choke the annulus without any presence of fan blades. So we can't have <coughs> we can't have high mass flow blockage due to the blades. We also need to keep the blade tip speed low enough to keep uh, noise low, the efficiency high by avoiding strong shocks um, and minimizing any damage that would occur due to bird strikes because these are the most exposed blades in the engine. So uh, in practice, a, a tip relative Mach number of about 1.6 is an upper limit, and for our fan pressure ratio of 1.5 for the new efficient aircraft engines, we'll assume that the blade tip relative Mach number is 1.3. So now let's turn our attention to turbines for a little bit. Um, basically the flow is expanding in the blade rows of an axial turbine. In every blade row, the pressure and the enthalpy decrease and the velocity increases. Now, we can do this, uh, this velocity increase more efficiently if we do it in a series of small steps rather than one big one at once. Um, so this is why we have multiple blade rows and stages. So we increase the velocity a bit, then we change our frame of reference to apparently reduce the velocity for the next row before increasing it again. Right, so each row increases the velocity relative to that blade row. So we reduce uh, the area, we increase the velocity and lower uh, the static pressure and temperature. Um, and to, to sort of really be able to keep track of this, we need a systematic way of switching between reference frames to keep track of the changes. And this is where we use velocity triangles. These were introduced briefly in uh, Aero Fundamentals last year, but we're going to talk a lot more about them today. So let's move through a sort of generic turbine stage to help us build these ideas. In general, the flow entering the stator, which is the first blade row in a turbine, um, may be not an axial. Um, it could have some swirl from, you know, maybe, uh, who knows, some, something upstream. Uh, so in general, the, te the tangential and axial components are, you know, given by uh, the velocity magnitude and the flow angles. There's no frame of reference change involved here at station one upstream of the stator, so there's not really a velocity triangle to construct the velocity just is what it is. So when we get to the stator outlet and then to, which is also the same station as rotor inlet, we need to do a change of reference frame. If we have an observer that's sitting on the rotor blades, that observer sees the relative velocity um, and from vector addition um, in the triangle shown here where we have the absolute velocity coming out of uh, the, the stator into the rotor uh, and then we have the relative velocity plus the frame velocity so we get that the axial velocity doesn't change but the tangential velocity in the relative frame 
is the absolute tangential velocity minus the blade speed. Our sign convention will be that the tangential velocities will be positive if they're in the same direction as u. Um, and just as another reminder, it is always, always, always true that for velocities, relative equals absolute minus frame. And this is a vector equation. This will be the foundation upon which we will build all of our analysis um, of flow inside turbo machines. So if we look at these uh, values here, both v theta 2 and v theta 2 rel uh, are both positive. We also take the convention that the angles are positive if they produce a positive tangential velocity. So both alpha 2 and alpha 2 rel are both positive angles in this case. And we can mathematically write down those relationships just using basic trigonometry. So the next thing to think about is what's going on at the exit to the rotor. And we want to build our velocity triangle there. Um, but rather than just give it to you, I want you to try to do this on your own. Draw the velocity triangle at the rotor exit. Write, as well, write expressions relating the absolute and relative tangential velocities, as well as the expressions that relate the angles to the velocity. So try to do this on your own before you move on to the next part of the video. But we'll also take this up again during the tutorial.